Hi, this is Kelly with Unpacking the Trunk Costumes. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm so glad you're here. And to the people who have subscribed before now, thanks, I'm glad you're back. Today's project is going to be part of hashtag historical Halloween 2020, which was a challenge that was put on by Kira Lee Cosplay and Lady Rebecca Fashions. And the challenge was to find a historical Halloween costume and recreate it. The costume I chose came from a Walden's Fancy Dress magazine and from the drawings, it looks like it's from about the 30s, I think. And the name of the costume is The Shepherdess. And this is The Shepherdess. She's got a cute hat, a shawl, a pretty dress and an apron, and lots of really cute cutouts. So I had this green fabric in my stash I thought would be perfect in this red plaid was something I picked up from Joann's. I used Simplicity 4136 and I used the Dorothy sleeves and I used the rest of it was from the Glinda costume, the bodice and the skirt. So here we go with the dress. I made a muslin mock-up of the bodice before I began to check for fit and I used that muslin as my pattern. It worked out fairly well except I would have liked the bodice length to be a little shorter, so if I do it again, I'll make it shorter. Here I am just cutting out the pattern from that cute green cotton fabric of mine. Then I stay stitched the neck edge of the bodice to keep it from stretching while I was working with it. I pinned the bodice fronts together, easing the curve of the bust. Then I sewed the front bodice pieces together, being careful to ease that curve. And when I finished sewing it, I clipped the curves to get them to lay flat. Then I pressed the bodice seam open on my pressing ham. You can see where I clipped the seam allowance there, and I flipped it over and pressed it on the front. Off camera, I pinned and sewed the side seams together, and I pressed those seams open too. So here you can see the sleeves I cut out of some cute eyelet fabric from my stash. I ran a long basting stitch along the top and I used that for my gathering. Now I didn't like the armbands on the pattern, so instead I just pressed a narrow hem in the bottom of the sleeve and I sewed that down. And then I sewed up the side seams of the sleeve. So here I am, I'm pinning the sleeves into the arm size, pulling up those gathering stitches to fit. And then I sewed the sleeves in. Fairly painless sleeve setting this time, thankfully. There is a neck facing that I sewed together at the shoulder seams. I put a nice narrow hem down at the bottom of the facing. And of course, I gave that a good pressing. And then I pinned the neck facing into the neck edge of the bodice. Once I did that, I went ahead and I sewed the neck facing in to the bodice. And here I am pressing that facing into the inside of the bodice. And off camera, I hand stitched, um, tacked down the, the neck facing. Here I am sewing those long side skirt seams together. And then I pressed my seams open flat. I also press the steam allowance on the back down. I press it open so that I can get the zipper in there. More on the zipper to come shortly. I ran, I don't know, three or four sections of long basting stitches along the top edge of the skirt for gathering. Hi, just
just letting you know, I hate zippers. I really do. And I tried to put one in this dress and it looks like garbage. And so I didn't film it because <laughs> I'm too embarrassed at my crappy skills of um, zipper insertion. So um, it's there. Just please try not to look at it. So, after the zipper trauma, I tried the dress on for length and spent some nice, quiet time hand-stitching the hem. Finally, it was time for the cutouts. First, I noted down how many of each cutout I would need. I found those images on my computer, printed them, and cut them out. Some of them I had to make, but here's the house, a tree, a sheep, a shepherd, a moon, and a star. I trace those onto some black felt with some chalk and cut them all out. And here's a sped up clip of me following the drawing to place the cutouts on the front of the skirt. And I just kind of randomly placed them onto the rest of the skirt. I just used a straight stitch with black thread and a lot of starting and stopping and turning and pivoting. And I slowly sewed each cutout onto that skirt. It actually, it was pretty relaxing and pretty fun. So the apron. I made this apron four times. And what you're seeing here is the fourth and final attempt. That was when I finally realized that the shape was actually basically a toilet lid. Ha! I cut the pattern out of paper and then I pinned it to that red plaid. I also backed the red plaid with some white muslin and this is me pinning that into place. And here I am measuring out the seam allowance. Good old quilter's ruler. And here I am cutting out the pattern. Slowly, snip by snip, triangle by triangle. Then I folded it out, I placed the red on the white, or the white on the red, however you want to see it. And I pinned that all in place. And then I sewed them all up. I left the top open for the turning, that's where I was going to put the waistband. And again, lots of starting and stopping and turning and pivoting. And I pressed everything I had sewed. I said in a previous video that I always do this after I've sewn something to make sure that the stitches, the thread and the stitches settle into the thread and the fabric. So then I snipped into the corners of each of those little triangles and I trimmed the seam allowances of each of the triangles so that there wouldn't be bulk and that it would be easier for them to lay flat. See all those little bits of trimming back there? <laughs> so then I turned the apron front right side out, being really careful to push out all those little pointy bits. And I pressed it nice and flat it occurred to me that um, I didn't want the white to roll over to the front. So after I had pressed it, I took it over to the machine and I just used the red thread and I top stitched around the whole apron. And guess what? More turning and pivoting and turning and pivoting, but that's okay. And I pressed it all nice and flat again. Next, I pin that waistband on. This is the fourth try of pinning a waistband on to the apron front. 
the waistband was just a long piece of rectangle of, th of that plaid fabric that was uh, hemmed in on, on either side. And I just sewed that right to the top of the apron. It turned out really cute. The shawl. Now, I don't have any footage of me making it, but I went and I, and I shot this for you. I draped the shawl with just some paper and then I cut out the pattern just kind of like I did with the apron. So with red plaid on the front and the white muslin on the inside. It turned out to be like a really weird shape. It crossed over in the front, but that's okay. I found this adorable trim that was perfect. So I top stitched that around the edge of the shawl. Now the shoulders didn't fit quite right, so I just put little tucks and it turned out fine. And here's the finished shawl. Super cute. There it is. Here's some footage of me out in my backyard wearing the costume. The hat was something I thrifted. I know it's not green, but it was just the right shape. So I put some pink flowers on it. There's the cutouts. You notice the unusual cutout of a dog next to the shepherd. Of course, every shepherdess needs a good dog. There's all the stars and the sheep. There's Maisie walking past me because she's playing the role of the dog today. It really turned out so cute and is actually very comfortable to wear. Well, there's Maisie. Looking for the sheep. Oh, here goes Maisie. We call her Crazy Maisie sometimes. Under the dress, I wore a tulle petticoat. There she is. I had so much fun making this project. The colors, the cutouts, the pattern. It was really, really fun recreating this. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to my channel. Make sure that you hit the thumbs up button for a like and hit the bell icon to be notified of my future videos. Thank you again so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.